Howdy, fellow denizens of the internet. I want to just do a brief video on how to take what are image stack files, split them into their component tiles, and then reconstruct them into a larger image. For an illustration of what I'm talking about, here is an example image that some people might rec refer to as a mosaic or some sort of tiled image or something of like that. And in this one, you can actually see the borders of where the individual images used to be. Now, a lot of people know that um, when you're doing microscope imaging, you cannot see a full brain tissue section. Even if you're working with mouse brains, a lot of the sections might be at least a little bit off screen, even at the lowest magnifications. So despite this being, for instance, at 40x total magnification, so 4x objective, this does not capture a whole rat brain section. In order to get around this, if your microscope has an automated stage, you can get it to move over and down or up and down uh, a specific amount where it is getting to exactly the next quadrant over in an image. So rather than having stuff that's overlapping or things that you have to messily control, an automated stage can be configured to advance exactly one field of view over down, left, up, whichever. Now, if you don't have a program that automatically stitches all of these little tiles together, that is what this video is about today. So let's take a closer look. First, a little bit about the stack files we'll be starting with. Sometimes you'll have this thing called a .tiff image, which may actually be multiple images all stuck into one file. So a stack file is when we sort of have a flip book of images um, within one file. The thing is that a lot of times we use regular picture viewing programs like the defaults in, let's say, uh, Mac and Windows. You won't know there's actually multiple images that you could just sort of scroll through. Uh, ImageJ, thankfully, allows us to do this. So an example of when you open up a TIFF file in ImageJ brings us to this one. It looks like nothing much is really going on here. However, you'll notice a scroll bar, and as we scroll forward, we'll see different snapshots of when the stage was moving around over the actual image. And the particular sequence this is in matters as well. So um, let's talk about trying to actually set things up to make them simpler. You'll also notice um, that I have this whole naming scheme here. This helps us figure out how to reconstruct the images from their tiles into a coherent mega image that isn't disordered. So what I usually do is a label by subject designation here. And then for a stack image file, I will give specifically the slide that it's on, the specific section that is on the slide. Um, so sections being slices. Most importantly, this two by four designation determines how big the grid was that tried to capture each individual tile. So the grid was two tiles across and four tiles down in this particular case. We need to know this especially because otherwise we're going to have a lot of problems trying to reconstruct the tiles into the right grid form. Um, so let's actually give it a go once we have this sort of setup. We'll have image J. I already opened up the file. Because of the way that my program works, I have to dissect a SAC file into individual images. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to File, Save As, Image Sequence. You'll make sure to save these into the correct folder. So let's just double check where they're going. Yes, I want to save it into this particular folder, subject M468, uh, slide one, section two, DAPI is the color channel I'm using, and then two by four. So that's where they're going to go. And then it's going to ask us, hey, how do you want to save these? Well, the particular defaults that seem to work best for image stitching are the following. You'll definitely still save it as a TIFF file. You must name it as tile underscore to make your life simpler for when you do the stitching process. So we'll go ahead and change that real quick. Just going to get rid of this whole name here. Say tile underscore. 
start at, we see zero, makes sense. Digits, we're gonna say two, because again, the stitching program defaults with two. We will leave this other thing unchecked and we'll hit okay. And I noted, noted here that you won't really see any feedback that it did anything, but it did dissect it into a bunch of different little file panels. So when we go to the specific folder that we see this in, this is the one that I was working with. Now we actually see the individual tiles split up from the stack file. We can also tell that it's a stack file based on just per its resolution, its file size is very large compared to each of the individual images, which is about based on there being eight images, each file, uh, each tile is one eighth the size. So everything's adding up pretty much. So let's talk about reconstruction. Uh, if we want to do that properly, we have to go and put them into a grid. Now, there is a tricky part to this. I have here order left and up, but unfortunately, I need to actually edit this because not every time does my microscope actually go in the correct direction. Sometimes it stops in the opposite way. So we'll have the um, stack image file still open up an image J. And what we can do to figure out which direction it starts in is just sort of scroll through to figure out what the borders of the slice are. For figuring this out, you don't exactly need to know all the details of what section of the brain you're looking at per like a brain atlas, but it does help a lot. Based on there being like what looks to be the bottom right corner of the brain tissue and how the next panel seems to flip to the other side of that, um, I'm going to expect that this is going to go from bottom up and going from um, right to left. So that's going to be one of the things that we're going to toggle. So probably it's going to be right and um, sorry, no, left and up is actually the correct designation, but this is why you check it in case it's going to be um, right and down. If it were taken from the top left corner, going right, zigzagging and reading pattern. All right. So let's take a look at the actual widget that we're going to. It's in plugins, stitching, grid, collection, stitching. Now, if you don't have this plugin, uh, it's probably because you did not download the full uh, Fiji version of ImageJ. So you'll want to go to, uh, you'll look up online the Fiji version of ImageJ. That's F-I-J-I. -I. Uh, it comes with a lot of bioinformatics plugins. And although I honestly don't use a lot of these, there's always something for somebody. So we have to go really scrolling down here, hitting the little arrow button to get to the stitching. And then we do grid collection stitching. Now, as I mentioned here, we want to go snake pattern, not row by row, but snake by rows. Get rid of the stitching little uh, log here. Well, I guess I can't just kind of put back here, snake by rows. And then we go left and up. Because again, we're starting in this bottom right corner and it went to this panel and then it snakes this way. Now we didn't have a three by three grid. You remember how it was a two by three. No, sorry, two by four, mixing myself up there. Uh, we're gonna hit okay. And then we get this pretty large window giving us a lot of options. So again, grid size X was two, grid size Y, was four in this case. Tile overlap, we are going to set to zero. In my case, the tiles exactly do not overlap. They are abutting each other right on the edges. Um, if you have a configuration where tiles overlap, this can basically figure out how to fuse them. We'll create what's called a fusion image. Technically, we're just attaching the tiles. We're not really fusing them. First file index. Um, we will want to double check this. It's probably going to be zero. Yeah, so file starts at tile underscore zero, zero. So let's go ahead and just check this out, make sure the instructions are as they should be here. Tile overlap 0%. Find the folder that contains all your files. First file index zero. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Let's go back to here. Okay, zero. Every time you create a new mega image stitched file, you must do this. You have to find the directory that it's in. 
we'll click open once we've found the directory where we want it to go. You'll notice file for file names for tiles. We already configured this. The stuff in the brackets is just what gets replaced with the numbers. Um, output text file name. Uh, we can leave this as default. We're not going to bother with the linear blending because there's no actual blending that's going to take place since they don't overlap. We do need to check off a few things. So um, uncheck compute overlap. Check ignore Z position. Do not change any of the other settings. So uncheck, check, leave this all as is. We will hit OK. And as long as everything goes all right, you should get to Fast Fusion. There seems to be no overlap between any of the files because we set it to 0%. Use Fast Fusion? Certainly, yes. And then we get the final result. Now, you'll notice in my image, it's a little lopsided looking. This is the problem I have with like uh, the particular DAPI filter we have in the microscope. I need to adjust it. That's why some of the images are brighter than others. But we'll do another round with a different fluorescence image where my filters aren't messed up. But we see that it did at least reconstruct the image entirely uh, as it should have. We're not done, though, because it just put this in memory. It did not save this as a new file. We have to do that. So go ahead and pop up the main image J window. We will hit file, save as, and we could save this as a TIFF file, that's fine. It'll direct us to the same folder it came from, and we can either save this as fused or mega image or whatever else. Um, I'm just gonna call it mega dappy, just because that's the color channel and mega for just it being the mega image. So we're going to save that, and then we can now close this. We can also close the image stack file we were working with before, if it lets me. All right. Now let's go ahead and do it again for the other two channels real quick. So go to open, go up a directory. I'll go now to the green channel labeled by the marker we used. Same sort of setup. Uh, we will save it as image sequence, bam. We will make sure it's going to the correct directory. It is not yet. So we'll hit browse. Okay, now it's going to the correct one. Okay, TIFF. As I mentioned, we have to change the file names. So tile underscore zero, two, leave all the rest as is. So now it's saved it. We're going to go ahead and just close this because we don't need it right now. Plugins, stitching, grid collection, stitching, snake by rows, left and up. Hit OK. It kept some defaults from earlier, so that makes our lives simpler. We do want to go to a new directory because it's still pointing at the DAPI one instead of the DFB that I just started using. We will keep everything else the same. We don't have to change these checkboxes. They'll only reset after we close image J. So we get to hit OK, crank that out, fast fusion, hit OK. And now we actually see a little bit more of a evenly lit image. And it's still the same section. This is just the green channel. If we were to zoom in and look around for, let's say, staining patterns, we would see some stained cell nuclei in this particular case. But it's subtle, admittedly. Remember, don't close this yet. We do have to save it. So file, save as, TIFF. And make sure to put it in the correct folder. And this will just be mega DFB, because that's the marker we were staying for, dot TIF. Save it. We can close this. Finally, last channel. Open. Up a directory. New N was the other one we stained for, stains all neurons. Their cell bodies in particular, we see a very similar kind of starting image, but with a lot more labeling to look at, which is cool. We will save it as image sequence. Once again, we will make sure to reset it to the correct folder so it auto updates. That's good. TIFF file, yep. We want it to be tile underscore. Start at zero, digits two, Hit OK, saves it. We can close this out for the moment. 
process stitching, grid collection stitching, snake by rows left and up, check, check, two, four, zero, zero, update the path, new end, hit open. This is the same, all this is the same, everything was saved from before, hit OK, it'll do its job, use fast view. And now we get a new N panel as well. And you can see that there's tons of neurons in this particular one, um, because again, it's just labeling all the neuron cell bodies based on that marker being very prolific in neurons. Okay, so then again, save this one as TIFF file. And I'll call this particular one mega new n dot tiff. Now these mega file names, I'm just naming based on my own preferences. You can kind of name them as any particular thing. Let's say we want to stitch all these three channels together into a full color image. That's the last part of this. And this is depending on like whether you actually need to do that or not. But some people might want to see like the full scope of co-localization and everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and just close that. Um, let's see, open recent. No, we're going to just open these manually, it looks like. So we're going to actually reopen the mega new end. We're going to go up and open up the DFB one, mega DFB. And we're going to go up, oh, leftover uh, rectangular selection. Let me just get rid of that. We're going to go up and load in the DAPI one as well, which is not so fancy looking, but it'll do. When we want to compose a multicolor image from multiple grayscale options, we'll just go to color, merge channels. And now we have to kind of know what the dyes were. DAPI is always a blue dye unless you choose to make it a different color. That's called pseudo coloring. So we're going to say DAPI is that one. Uh, the green we stained our marker DFB using green fluorescent dye. And then red, we stained new N. Now, I could swap the green and the red if for some reason that was helpful. Um, we will create composite. We don't really need the source images right now, but you could keep that checked in case you're worried that you screwed up which channel went where. Um, nothing's a problem until you save any files. So. We're just going to hit OK. And now we got a lot of crazy color to look at. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in, though, to see if we could find those green cells. They're, they're there. They're very tiny. Like, for instance, that's one right there. There's a few there. The blue is pretty much all cell nuclei. The red is all neuron cell bodies. The green are nuclei that contain um, the marker delta phos B, which is associated with addiction-related neuroplasticity. But basically, in a nutshell, this is how you end up stitching these together as one big old mega image or mosaic or tiled image, however you want to call it. If you want to save this as a multicolor image, you can do that. Um, for my analysis, I usually keep them separate, but this gives you the full view of what you're looking at, especially if you're not sure where in the brain this section comes from, having all the stains overlaid really helps you figure out um, where this aligns with a particular brain atlas page. And little pro tip, you can toggle the channels on and off. So we go color channels tool. We can just click them on and off to make them disappear. So those tiny little green dots become much more apparent when we don't have a huge coat of red obscuring them. All right, and that's it. Take care, y'all.